All right, guys, let's watch this and talk about it after. I'm just waiting for that useless man to come back and then we leave. Hey, dude, I saw you the day they go walk. <laughs> hey, hey. Ah. Good evening. Hi, Ngozi. How are you doing? So, this is what you've been doing all day. And I was busy thinking you're becoming useful with your life. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? You don't even have a job and you're not even bothered about it. Other men are busy buying gifts for their wives. And you, what do I get? Absolutely nothing. You should be ashamed of yourself. Anyway, take my clothes to the dry cleaner. If the money is not enough, then you add it up. Mom. After all, you're my husband, right, Abby. Right. Then I soaked my underwears in the bathroom. I want you to wash them before I come back tomorrow. Take. Take this money. Sorry. Hey, 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 hey. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Hey, let me check. Excuse me. Look at the way he was staring at me. Imagine. Can you even I ask him to get me a glass of water and he's here drinking it. And when I leave, then you can discipline him. Okay. I have something important that I want to discuss with you. Go ahead. Sex. It's been a while I had it. And my husband, he's not even trying to touch me again after the last time. But what are you talking about? Demand it. If I want to have sex with Joe now, this is how I do it. Joe, I'm going to have sex with you today. And I need you to be neat. Like I need you to wash up. Hey. Hey. I want to have sex with you tomorrow. So I want you to be energized and clean. You now dictate to me, your husband, when you want to have sex. I'm the breadwinner of this family. You are the breadwinner of this family. It doesn't make you stupid. I was there for, for years. I bought this house. I got you the car you, you drive. This job you boast so much about today, I got it for you. For now, I am the sunshine in your life. You are just worthless. Calm down. You're in charge here, okay? Your husband is probably somewhere chilling and you're here panicking. But he always takes my call. Eh, okay, but well, have you called any of his friends? I don't know any. Let me let me call you back. Okay, let me just uh, let me ask my husband and see if he knows something. He might just know. Okay. So let's talk about this movie, Love or Lost. It kinda like really rubs me wrong when I see ladies that once they become the breadwinner they turn into tyrants you know and i feel like it's so unnecessary you know i know there's this whole mindset of somewhat independency once a woman becomes the breadwinner you know maybe it's okay to feel that way but what i don't understand is why you have to start treating your husband wrong when a man makes money he starts thinking about how to better his family make everybody happy how to, you know, beef up their level in life, the whole family's level. If the kids are going to mediocre schools, they try to better their schools. If the wife is, you know, not looking too beautiful or maybe well-kept, he tries to beef his wife up. And that's what men do when they make money. Somehow, it starts to feel like when a woman makes money, she starts feeling like independence is more of a thing, you know. You can't tell me nothing anymore. You shouldn't do this. I'm not going to do that. You know, things like that. And that seems like what this movie is portraying. Surprisingly enough, it's the man that first had money. And as you can see, if you watch the movie, is that he's, he was the one that bought the house. He's the one that bought the cars. Of course, Miss Hap fell on him later down the line the wife's job which is the same one the man helped her get seems to be the one that's now sustaining the family however the lady just took it beyond sustaining the family and took it to the next level which is turning into a toxic person you know slapping the husband left and right you know talking to him anyhow he always comes back you know, this kind of toxic behavior always has a way of, you know, turning back around, you know, in terms of karma. You know, if you become the breadwinner, 
it doesn't give you any sort of entitlement to treat your partner wrong. And this goes both ways, whether it's a guy or a girl. You know, it's unfortunate that it seems like it's the wives that tend to be the culprit in this kind of scenario. Even things that shouldn't be a problem somehow starts becoming a problem just because she's the one that bringing out the money. You start hearing things like, I feed you, I do this, I do that. When you're in a marriage, there's a certain level of respect that you should accord your husband. Even if it's for nothing else, just the same way they say that who findeth a good woman findeth a good thing. Because I'm sure when the Bible was putting that quote together, they should have differentiated between wife and good woman. Because these days, there's a big disparity, you know. So it's the same way that if you find a good man, you found a good thing. So it applies both ways. This is really an open appeal to ladies, wives. However you find yourself ending up as the breadwinner, treat your family right. Still respect your husband. Still be the wife that you swore to be. There's only one thing that's constant in life, and that's change. So if you keep treating a man a certain way, I can promise you at a point in his life, he's going to pick peace over you. And I think this really applies both ways. If you treat a woman shitty, definitely at some point, she's also going to take peace of mind, mental health, you know. So it really is both ways. But the one that saddens me more is this whole mindset of, you know, once a woman has money in the family, you know, it seems like independence now starts becoming a thing. I don't need the man. I don't need this. I don't need that. You know, and she stops being about the family and turns into something else. Now, of course, this doesn't apply to everybody. But, you know, if you are one of those that have that mindset, you need to change it. You need to change it. I can tell you guys something. You know, even when the kids come, the kids are going to grow up and the kids are going to move on. And you are going to be left with that husband or that wife, that partner. And it's two of you. It's two of you that's going to make that old age memorable. That's about it for you guys on this one. You know, if you love content like this, please like, share, subscribe, you know, follow. Uh, once again, this is CJ from Magnetic Studios, and I'm here to deliver sense.